conspiracy, one of the darkest words in the language of man. Yet there is hardly a single page of history that doesn't partially reveal the deadly eye of conspiracy at work. It was a conspiracy that directed Brutus against Caesar in the Roman Senate on the Ides of March. It was a conspiracy that plotted the betrayal of West Point by Benedict Arnold during the American Revolution. It was a conspiracy that led John Wilkes Booth to the assassination of President Lincoln on Good Friday, 1865. The past record of man is burdened with accounts of assassinations, secret combines, palace plots, and betrayals in war. The tenet of conspiracy has been a dominant force in all history. But in spite of this clear record, an amazing number of people have begun to scoff at the possibility of conspiracy at work today. They dismiss such an idea merely as a conspiratorial view of history. The purpose of this presentation is to show that the conspiratorial view of history, particularly of recent history, is the correct view. That there is a secret and powerful combine at work today. That it constitutes the unseen government of the United States. And that it properly can be identified as the capitalist conspiracy. In 1963, the nation was held spellbound by the testimony of gangster Joe Valachi as he exposed the inside workings of the international crime syndicate known as the Cosa Nostra or the Mafia. No matter how carefully criminal conspiracies are organized, eventually they're exposed because someone on the inside goes to the authorities and talks. The same is true with political conspiracies. For instance, over the years, there has been a steady stream of defectors from the communist apparatus. And through their testimony, we now have a clear idea of how that conspiracy is organized and operated. But one large piece of the puzzle always has been missing. It's a matter of record that some of the greatest help to world communism often has come from prominent and respectable leaders within the United States. Obviously, these men are not communists. As a matter of fact, most of them are extremely wealthy and are thought of as capitalists who supposedly would have the most to lose under socialism and communism. And yet the record is disturbingly consistent. And Americans repeatedly have asked why. Why have some of the richest people in the United States, both in and outside of government, aligned themselves with leftist policies that would appear to be the path to their own destruction? And if there is a conspiracy at work among these men, why hasn't someone on the inside exposed it? The answer is, someone has. Dr. Carol Quigley is a professor of history at Georgetown University. He is the author of the widely used textbook, Evolution of Civilization. He is a member of the editorial board of the monthly periodical, Current History. He has been a frequent lecturer and consultant for such groups as the Industrial College of the Armed Forces, the Brookings Institution, the U.S. Naval Weapons Laboratory, the Naval College, the Smithsonian Institute, and the State Department. Dr. Quigley also has been closely associated with many of the family dynasties of the super-rich. He is, by his own post, an insider with a front-row view of the world's money power structure. When Dr. Quigley wrote this 1,300-page book of dry history entitled Tragedy and Hope, it was obvious that it would never be read by the masses. It was intended for the intellectual elite. And to such a select readership, Dr. Quigley cautiously exposed one of the best-kept secrets of all time. But he also made it quite clear that he was an extremely friendly apologist for this group, and that he fully supports their goals and purposes. On page 950, Dr. Quigley says, I know of the operations of this network because I have studied it for 20 years and was permitted for two years in the early 1960s to examine its papers and secret records. I have no aversion to it or to most of its aims and have for much of my life been close to it and to many of its instruments. In general, my chief difference of opinion is that it wishes to remain unknown. Dr. Quigley points out that during the past 200 years, while the peoples of the world gradually were winning their political freedom from monarchies, the major banking families of the world were nullifying the trend toward representative government by setting up new dynasties of political control. 
but behind the scenes in the form of international financial combines. These banking dynasties had learned that all governments, whether they be monarchies or democracies, must borrow money in times of emergency, and that by providing such funds from their own private resources, with strings attached, of course, gradually they could bring both kings and democratic leaders under their control. Dr. Quigley believes that people should be more familiar with the identity. We're going to break in on this part. and show you these names. <clears throat> these are the controllers. At the bottom, Rothschild and Morgan. Include such names as Baring, Hambros, Lazard, Erlanger, Warburg, Schroeder, Seligman, The Spires, Mirabeau, Mallet, Fold, and above all, Rothschild and Morgan. It should be noted that while the Rothschilds and other Jewish families cooperated together in these ventures, this was by no means a Jewish monopoly as some have alleged. Men of finance of many nationalities and many religious and non-religious backgrounds collaborated together to create this superstructure of hidden power. We go to Proverbs 22, verse 7. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Then we go to Leviticus 25. Take down no usury of him or increase, but fear thy God that thy brother may have lived with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him the victuals for increase. The local commercial bankers with whom we deal in everyday life. International bankers deal not with the general public, but with the industrial giants of the world, with other financial institutions, and especially with governments. The key to their success has been to control and manipulate the money system of a nation while letting it appear to be controlled by the government. The net effect is to create money out of nothing, lend it to the government, and then collect interest on it. Now, the ministers and the preachers don't say nothing about this in the Bible. And I want you to notice another thing. All of these men are Caucasian Europeans. And so, April Fool's Day, Easter, taxes. Are you beginning to put it together? So, all this is under the authority or the government of Caucasians, not the black man, not the original man of the world. Think about it. Truth should be told and not sold. I'm black light telling the truth. Passing the mic.